for me, Dan Hartman was like one of the best teachers to me. He was so smart and really hard on me. And he taught me how to edit two track. I mean, living in America was like six minutes and 45 seconds long. It became three minutes and 30 seconds by him pointing to me going, cut there on that snare drum. There. Where? Here. And I'm slicing and he's going, no, do it again. And it's the master. Wow. Loved it. But we were moving vocals around the same way, so I had no choice but just follow his lead. He said, just let me show you the path. Don't question it. Just go with it. So that was cool. And they didn't have Command Z then. <laughs> no Command Z. No Command Z. Z is that small sliver of tape that <laughs> fell on the floor that you yeah. think was the one that you used, and you tape that back in. Yeah. Yeah, Command Z for all those out there. <laughs> well, I, yeah, Command Z is undo. We didn't have undo back then. No. Like, it's, a, it's, a different, uh, it's a different approach now. I think Command Z is like almost makes it worse um, because you may not commit to the perfect cut or the perfect edit. You're like, oh, I can always, you know, just fudge it and Command Z it. So I've heard that you um, mix in three hours or so. Yeah, I mean, it depends on the song. So how did you, how did you end up honing your uh, style and getting it down to this sort of... Um, Three-hour sci science, maybe. Well, I mean, I think the three-hour science is just because I figure the song out and there's no nonsense about it, and I get, I hear how I want it, and I just get it there, you know, um, and that's that's what makes it three hours. There's a lot of involved that makes it three hours. It's all that you're so used to your rig, you have your stuff done the same way, you know. There's no questioning it. Also, to make it happen in three hours means that you don't question your instincts ever. Hmm. That you never look back and only go forward. So that that's the that's the winning combination right there. Guys that are scratching their head, turning knobs, going, I don't know if this is going to work on here. Let me try something else. That's not making the song become a hit or making it happen. That's just screwing around. At what point did it did it get to the science? I mean, did you start off that that confident and that tight and that sure, or has it been like a process of learning all of the gear and figuring out what you like the best and what chains work the best for you on vocals, on guitars, or whatever it is that you're doing? I mean, I think it's exactly what you just said, is that you find all the magic chains and you have them all ready for you, the magic chains. <laughs> um, you, ha <laughs> you have all the magic chains and Really, you get them to work for it, you know that this is gonna work no matter what on these songs, or that's gonna work. And once you get that, you know that half the problem solving is done, so what becomes more important is making the song work, because getting the puzzle figured out is the hard part. Making it sound good should be the easy part. Speaking of mixing, looking at this desk, which is the car I've been driving for a few years now, since its inception. I bought the one model and I stuck with it. And, um, Four or five hundred thousand miles later, it's working. Well, I guess we wouldn't count it in miles, would we? We'd count it in mixes. And I would say ballpark, fifteen thousand on this. 15, on this, fifteen thousand mixes. Okay, maybe twelve five. Oh, right. Maybe the oil change comes at fifteen. Maybe twelve five is we're still good. How many records is that? Do we even know? I can't do math. It's it's a pretty large number, it's, but I'm saying that incredible. that covers a pretty large course of history, but. I, w I mean, I would say that this tool right here was the best design mixing tool ever made because it's like the piano of mixing where right now, okay, I have a song on the desk. I can easily go and modify 14 or 15 different things as I talk to you and not worry about a mouse on a screen, which everyone's used to, and move faders and talk and imply whatever I want to do all at once. It was really designed for the hands-on just uh, cause and effect style of mixing. So it's because it's all analog. I mean, obviously, when I was introduced to it, I was more about the function of the desk than it competing with the sound. The sound was great, but the thing that made it win the race was the effectability of the automation, of the gates on every channel, the compressors. It was so built to do that thing that Clear Mountain started. Like, he really, like, when he started mixing, like, oh my God. That's what it's going. That's where it's going. And this console was the tool that engineered that style to happen. And uh, you consider uh, Clear Mountain the ground zero um, of, of mixing, yes? Absolutely. For me, it was Bob <clears throat> is the creator of, like he is the, the master of who started the mixing, which became a, a thing. Because you know, it wasn't a thing prior. No, it was like the engineer would mix the song after the last overdub, make a few tweaks to the producer, and off it goes to mastering. 
There wasn't the guy that grabbed the song or the tape and went to his own place and did his mix. He was the first one that became the hired gun to grab whatever and Bob's gonna do. And as soon as I got wind of that, all I wanted to do was be like Bob. Even to this day, I still feel that if I can be in the same league as Bob, and this is not me just bobbing out here, but it's, <laughs> it's just me being honest about it. Um, and what record in particular? Was there one in particular that inspired you of his work? Reckless by Brian Adams. Wow. When you hear the drums on that, and you just hear how the, loud the thing is and the guitars, I mean, obviously that, but once you heard Let's Dance, you know, game over. So you have all of these um, chains. Are they all analog right now? I mean, with, with the, the CLA plugins and all the plugins that are at your fingertips, I would imagine that you have a collection um, over the years and the ability to get your hands on really fabulous equipment. Um, are you doing a, mostly analog or a combination or? Definitely, it's on this side of the desk, which is where I am, I have, it's all analog. So I picked all my favorite stuff analog to plug in. When I build the master from the other side where the Pro Tools rig is, I'll use some of my plugins to at least make the recording sound more like it's corrected or ready to go. Mm -hmm. But all my stuff on this side of the desk, because the console's analog, is all my analog chains, all my outboard gear. And yeah, I've picked some winners over the year, for sure. What's your favorite? I mean, my favorite's definitely, for vocals, the Blue 1176s and the particular one that I use. I mean, I have the one limiter that's seen every singer. I mean, it's gone from Bonner to Springsteen. It's gone from, from Daughtry to from Nickelback to Stevie Nicks to Sheryl Crow. I mean, from Shine Down to, to Sugar, uh, Sugar Land. I mean, Tina Turner to, you know, I mean... To How is it that it works for everyone? Well, this one particular one just has character that works on like 90% of the vocal tracks I get. So if there's ever a fire, I'm unscrewing that one and leaving the rest to go. <laughs> <laughs> with the new technology, with, with all, every, a lot of people doing stuff in the box, and um, has it, ch it must have changed the process of mixing for you by what you're receiving from producers. Well, of course, I mean, for me, the mixing in the box, I see how it works for people, and if, if, they, if they're happy with it, great. Now with recording, there's less to EQ it, less to like keep it flat and let him deal with it later. There's more of that the stuff needs to be supercharged a bit more than it used to be, because we're not dealing with hiss. We're just dealing with mm. the file. But now you must be dealing with um, maybe more tracks than you were before? I would say the numbers have definitely steadily increased. I don't see anything below 100 anymore. And I see stuff wow. closer to 200. That's a lot of sound to organize. Especially through 48 faders or 44 faders.